you see that yellow sign like right over there across the river yeah. and then you see the same yellow sign over here this is where the old pipeline the, the 1953 pipeline. pipeline and it exists right now it's running underneath this river and they want to twin it and build a new pipeline right adjacent to this pipeline We are the Sohuapmo. Our territory is, is huge. It's one of the biggest in BC. The Kinder Morgan pipeline is proposed to run right through the heart of our territory. We have never lost by war to any nation. We never lost by conquest. We will never surrender and we will never consent to extinguish our sovereignty to any nation. My name is Kanahus Peshke Emanuel. I am from the Sikwatmuk and the Tanaka Nations. My name means Red Woman. My sister, she's a mapper, and she mapped this Kinder Morgan pipeline route through our territory, and the whole map was veins of water. Kamloops is actually one of the bigger reserves in our nation, and they're one of the bands, the INAC bands, that actually signed an agreement with Kinder Morgan. And also along here, you see these other small bands, but they're very, very small with spring pines. They have a right of way that they uh, negotiated with the, with the Kinder Morgan pipeline without too. The, without the consent, consent of this entire nation and of, of Sikhwam. Despite all the fine words about nation to nation and free prior and informed consent and the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, which says there needs to be free prior and informed consent, every single one of these projects are opposed forcefully, vocally by First Nations in their path. Yes, there are bands that have made deals, but in every one of these cases, they do not have free prior and informed consent from all of the impacted Indigenous people. And if Canada lived up to its duties to provide basic services to Indigenous communities, then making deals with pipeline companies would not be necessary. Everything around us has been mined, logged, roaded, bulldozed, and destroyed. So what's left in the world are our communities. Tar Sands is one of the biggest industrial projects on the face of the planet, and it's also the largest source of gr greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. It's the fastest growing source of greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. So, you know, by continuing to extract tar sands, we're just exacerbating the climate issue that we're seeing globally. We're going to organize, but we're going to do it from a place that is deeply rooted in our indigenous spiritual cosmology with a deep and profound spiritual foundation invoking teachings and lessons from the civil rights movement, embracing a non-violent civil disobedience pathway forward. We have the power and the technology to obtain energy from the sun and from the wind, but yet we're causing hurt and pain and destruction through oil. I just let that sink, that doesn't make sense to me. We've been raised for this battle our whole life. We've been conditioned and raised and we're not going to lay down. We will battle until there isn't a breath left in us. And when we fall, our children will take over because they're being raised to battle. And then our grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs>